Hello, sexy souls, and welcome to another episode of the Move with Love podcast. I'm April Miranda, your host, healer, and guide. And for today's episode, I am so thrilled to introduce a good friend of mine, soul sister. She is a lifestyle designer, sharing through her own experience of love, loss, trauma, and birth. She's a mother to a beautiful little boy whose life on earth has opened her up in ways she hadn't experienced before. Oh, there's my baby. <laughs> Ashley's purpose in this lifetime is to connect people through love and community. Her heart's desire is to empower others through self-empowerment and self-trust. Most recently, she has been working on creating an oracle deck for pregnant women, a way to create a safe space for women to feel loved, seen, and expressed while connecting them with their inner knowing. Please welcome to the show, Ashley Adamo. Hi! <laughs> Hello, <laughs> what goddess! A beautiful introduction. <laughs> oh, no, it's all you. It's your essence. And I am so thrilled to have you here. Like we crossed paths. Is it 2019? And yeah. our lives have just been kind of interwoven. So witnessing you grow, witnessing you evolve into a wife, into a mother, this designer, this creator. And oh, you have such a special place in my heart. So thank you for oh, saying yes. Feeling is mutual. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, so let's let's start like, oh, maybe tell me three pivotal moments of your story that got mm-hmm. you to where you are today? Hmm. So I would probably say there's a couple of pretty monumental moments um, for me personally. I think a lot of the journey for me towards my womanhood, as I like to call it, was around relationship and you know, entering in and out of different types of relationships and what they kind of offered in terms of growth and realization and redefining, you know, what relationship means to me and what relationship um, looks like for me in my life and how that plays out was probably pretty significant in the sense of identifying myself as who I am today, you know, who I am as a woman, as a human being, as somebody that's a part of the collective, um, and how I really want to show up in the world as an individual human being is really how I'd like to put it. Um, I think the second moment was my journey towards pregnancy. So there was kind of a lot of pre- Oh, well, how do I want to call it? Pre-experience, pre-offerings, um, I guess, that lined me up into the alignment of being able to receive, you know, the beautiful soul that is today my son and being able to become pregnant and allow that journey to unravel. I had a bit of um, an experience in my early 20s where you know, I was diagnosed with HPV, which turned into cancer. I was part of, you know, that small 3% of people that um, it does transition into becoming cancerous. And so I had gone through a series of these surgeries and these series of these conversations with uh, medical practitioners that were sharing, you know, some of the risks and some of the potential, um, I guess, I don't want to call them limitations, but almost like, yeah, limitations I may experience when trying to conceive, when trying to get pregnant. And so at the back of my mind, this was always something that kind of sat there as, you know, being super devastating. Um, I think I knew very early on in life that I was meant to be a mother. I was meant to be on this earth as mother. And I was open to how that was going to look, whether it was having our own children through adoption, through whatever that journey was going to be. It was something that was just so strongly a part of my purpose here. So in my early 20s, going through that process and that journey, it was truly devastating. And it just put me in this place of becoming super aware of my well-being on a very deep level in terms of, okay, so why is this showing up? you know, what's going on in my body and my emotions, what am I not giving life and healing through that has created this dis-ease in my body, has created this ailment in my body, right? So 
that kind of began this beautiful journey of just really getting super connected with myself in a newfound way. Um, and that was super um, life-changing. It was life-changing to re-identify my own relationship with my body and my own relationship with all of the systems that contribute to our physical body. And then, you know, fast forward and, you know, being able to get pregnant for the first time, having an early miscarriage and working through that process and journey. I think I was kind of in a place of, I don't even think I fully gave it acknowledgement to some capacity because I was just so shocked. I even got pregnant. You know, I had this old story playing out on my mind that even though I had done all the, like the work that I thought, and I healed this limiting belief of, I won't be able to get pregnant and I'm going to have to go through these alternative, you know, avenues. The fact that I got pregnant was just so strong. And I was in disbelief to be honest. And I was so overfilled with joy that that was even possible. So, um, a couple months later, we continued to, I don't even like saying trying, but we were open to the idea of getting pregnant again. And sure enough, I got pregnant with my son and that became probably the third biggest moment to date of my life in terms of receiving this beautiful soul, feeling the fulfillment of life inside me and what that brought forth and what that created um, for me. And it just really, it just, it just gave me such beautiful awareness, truly on a different level again. Um, and yeah, all the, all the, uh, all the changes that come with that and all the acceptances and realizations that come with that. I think that's kind of been a really big part of my growth, a growth as a human today. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Um, I guess some um, what challenges you mentioned you know, your, your physical body, <laughs> there's mm-hmm. Cody, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned your physical buddy. body, but um, I guess, how did you overcome or what modalities, what methods helped you get through, you know, when you talk mm-hmm. about what happened with your body in your twenties or, you know, with the early pregnancy loss, like what, how did you get through those mm-hmm. tough moments? Mm -hmm. of being a woman right Mm -hmm. your experiences that only a woman only someone with a womb can experience Mm -hmm. so I want to hear how Mm -hmm. did you heal yourself yeah I think from that moment um I really quieted down the outside noise it was the first time in my life that I had really gone inward like I had talked prior to that through my meditation practice and all of these other modalities, I was already incorporating my life of this inward journey and it not being, you know, a final destination that we achieve, but it's a continuous enlightenment, I call it, you know, and I think what really helped my healing journey was really going back to myself, getting back to being the self-advocating woman that I had always been, but I kind of lost along the way with all of this outside, I like to call it kind of noise, right? Like this outside influence. And so through the miscarriage, through going through the multiple surgeries, you know, with what I had experienced, I really quieted down so much around me and I became really, really present with me, the inner parts of me, my self-trust, my self-empowerment, my inner knowing, my intuitive hit was so much stronger becoming pregnant. As you know, it's like, I couldn't describe it. It was just like, I had this knowing, you know, and it just every day got stronger and stronger and stronger. And that really helped to heal parts of me that felt limited, that felt, um, you know, really vulnerable and really dependent on someone else telling me this is what this is. This is what that is. This is how this should look. This is how that needs to look. This is what the mold is. This is the yada, 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 yada. And I literally just, yeah, it really, it really shifted for me in that moment, to be honest, April. I just, yeah, I think that journey has been what the phase I'm in now and what's led to some of this beautiful creation of the womb Oracle community. And what I've been creating in that way is that I really want to be a part of the conversation around normalizing everything around womanhood, motherhood, and all the in-between, because we really are such powerful beings that have this innate knowing 
that when we tap into it and when we allow space for it, we have all the answers. We have all the tools to self-heal. We have all the tools to move forward. We have it all. We have it all. And that's kind of been the journey I've been on since then. Mm -hmm. And, oh, and you say like, tap it into that wisdom and it's like an innate wisdom, Mm -hmm. right? And with what you're creating this womb Oracle deck, I, you know, you invited myself, which was such an honor and some Mm -hmm. other divine women to participate, but it's like, I feel so connected to, I guess, the lineage of women, Mm -hmm. like where are here in the present the women who were here before us and the women who you're gonna reach in the future Mm -hmm. it's like I feel it pumping through our veins and vibrating Mm -hmm. in our bones of how Mm -hmm. raw and um yeah intuitive like when you say Mm -hmm. a knowing like I totally Mm -hmm. resonate with that so um you did touch base a little bit but what inspired the womb oracle deck creation Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, experiencing my own journey through pregnancy and the beautiful, as I like to call it, range and contrast that is so present in every single moment. The duality is something that cannot be put even into words at times, but it is so present. Um, And I just remember feeling like you know, a lot of the old world paradigms and structures continue to pull us away from our innate connection with self, from our innate connection with mama earth, right? And it just became so clear to me when I was pregnant that we don't need someone to teach us really anything around pregnancy or motherhood. We just need space to be witnessed, space to be held, space to be supported. Community became so strong for me. It was like, I was really starting to identify with women that were like-minded that went with women that just had this natural way of holding space, not needing to advise, not needing to teach, just really holding such beautiful space for me that I was like, wow, that is what I want to be a part of. That is what I want to continue to give breath and to give attention and to give focus. And as someone that's always loved all, you know, the witchy things and all the Oracle decks and tarot cards and just (laughs) all the herbs and creating, you know, little medicines and teas. And I really have always been so drawn to all of that. I was like, you know what, I'm going to create a deck. I'm going to create a deck that really supports a woman during this time that normalizes all of it, that shares experience, not just from my own experience, but also other mothers. Like that was so clear to me as well, beautifully weaving like yourself and all of the other 10 women. It was like, they're beautifully woven throughout the deck that whoever receives the deck will really feel a sense of community energetically Mm -hmm. without even being in the physical presence of each of us. And that was really something that was so important to me. Wow. Yes. And I'm so excited because it is around the corner that, you know, (laughs) like spring is around the corner, your birth in this new deck, but let's go back to the conversation with community because that is where, how we first connected, Mm -hmm. yeah, the future self community and we were partnered to be karmic partners and I just remember how you held such beautiful space. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I was pregnant at the time and I was so hormonal. And you talk about this duality. Whoa, I was definitely in it. Mm -hmm. You know, but together we've been through that experience, but also pregnancy together, this pandemic together, and Mm -hmm. marriage. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And oh, and you know, I just I just love um when you say like a woman just needs to be witness, like we don't need mm-hmm. to solve or fix or give any advice. It's mm-hmm. really just to be seen, be heard, to feel safe, to be welcomed as she is all her mm-hmm. raw emotional self. Mm-hmm. Um, You mentioned duality. Like, is there, <laughs> do you want to like, give an example of something that you experienced and you want to shine light to and you said normalize yes 
Is there something yeah. or a story that you want to share? Yeah. So, I mean, I think for me, I'll share my birthing experience because I think that there isn't enough conversation around that. Um, for me, birth was the purest form of duality. Um, I intended to have a home birth. I labored at home for 17 hours. Baby had a different way. God had a different way. I wasn't dilating. Um, let's just say quick enough to, you know, what was considered safe because my water had been broken already for a amount of hours. And it just, the next stage was, you know, going to the hospital and having that sort of intervention, which was already something that was very challenging for me to except not from the sense of that I had this plan and my plan wasn't followed through. It was more just because I had do, been doing so much of this inward work. There's a part of my lineage that there is a bit of, you know, substance abuse and, you know, certain things that are going on that I won't get too much into for this specific conversation, but I had always had this really strong knowing that for me to be numb in any capacity was just not good for me. And so the thought of getting the epidural and not feeling everything was just something that was already so hard for me to accept because I knew it could potentially trigger some ancestral wounds that I've been really trying to become aware to and healing for generations to come after me. And so it was very traumatic to feel even a bit of numbness in terms of birthing my son. And oh, buddy, yeah, I love, I love. <laughs> it's all good. Dramatic no birth. Anything. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. So I think that um, the birthing experience. I remember, like, you know, having this big mirror in front of me. I said, at least if I can't feel everything, I want to see what's going on, so I understand what to do instead of someone just telling me push this way or do this. I wanted to kind of like connect it. Mm-hmm. And so I gave birth to my son, and I remember in that moment. You know, Anthony, my husband came beside me in my ear and he whispered, it's a boy. And I remember feeling in that moment so happy and in such gratitude, but also so sad because I remember feeling his life force release out of my body. Like it's such a, it was such a vivid feeling that I did not like. You know, I remember speaking to certain mothers and they were like, oh, but wasn't it just so beautiful to finally meet your son? And I was like, yes, I'm not taking away from that. But I also felt a very contrasting emotion that didn't feel good, where I was almost like I felt empty. I felt a sense of emptiness. And that was really challenging for me to experience in the first three months of postpartum was this constant sense of gratitude and love and happiness but at the same time feeling so empty and I remember feeling so bad about it because you know I had been brought up in these communities in these societies where it was like it's such an honor and a blessing to give birth and yes it is but it's also okay that I felt what I felt and I think I made myself so wrong in the first couple of months that really triggered my postpartum depression in such a significant way Um, That was also something that I ended up really needing to work through and heal from. But now knowing what I know, it's like, I want to be a part of witnessing and holding space for the women that don't enjoy birthing, that don't enjoy that, but also the women that do, because there is space for all of it. There is no right emotion or wrong emotion to have, because we are all uniquely having our own birthing emotions and feelings and experiences. Yeah. And so I think for me, that is probably the most prominent moment of duality I had experienced even to date through pregnancy, birthing and becoming mother for sure. Yeah. And it's definitely, (laughs) um, it's like a rite of passage, you know, Mm -hmm. it is, I don't even know what the word initiation, but like to, and like the words like spiritual assignment is Mm -hmm. that came through me. I'm like, whoa, like it is so profound in such Mm -hmm. a 
it's everything all at once. You know what I mean? And with social media glamorizing some beautiful pregnant pregnancy shoots or newborn shoots, and I, but like when you talk about the duality, I'm like, I am there with you to normalize mm-hmm. it all, mm-hmm. to welcome it all, and whether it's whether whatever you want to call it, whether it's the light and dark or the shadow side of motherhood, like it all exists. Mm-hmm. And when you said you were making yourself wrong, like. I, I hear you because it was, yeah, like I, I would feel guilty or ashamed of some of the thoughts or feelings that I was mm-hmm. experiencing. I'm like, I know this is a blessing. I'm grateful. And mm-hmm. I just had to say, and, and, and also, I mean? yeah. And also this is part of my reality too. And being multifaceted and very multidimensional. Like oh, even right now, just having to release perfectionism, release mm-hmm. control with mm-hmm. dancing with Bodhi here. Like <laughs> I I was so set up and you know, this is this is motherhood. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. We're juggling, we're dancing. And I, you know, like this podcast is like a little um Like I don't do it for money. It's just to share. It is to hold space. It is to create, Mm -hmm. co-create with my sisters or spiritual entrepreneurs. And so like, it's like a little, um, what's the word? Little baby project art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, But um, yeah, I, we have at least all the limiting beliefs or fears or narratives that can keep us feeling wrong or Mm -hmm. small or staying hiding and doing it alone Mm -hmm. so that's why I love and resonate with what you're doing your vision and I'm I'm here to support it so let's talk about your boom oracle deck yeah before we go there I want to just really um honor you because I see what you're doing with the podcast and your move with love community and all the things. And I think that what's become so clear to me is that the more that women like you put this out into the world and almost are this example of what is possible, you make it okay for others. That's the thing, right? Like it's not even about the talking about it or the advising of it it's like embodying it like you're embodying what you're seeking so it's like I've realized that too it's like by us standing in that and by us standing in that truth and embodying that truth you're making it okay for others and I just want to honor you for that because you're one of those people to me too like witnessing you and your rawness and your truth and your story with your firstborn and now your second born, like you make so much okay for me. And I just want to thank you for that because I think that's so needed in our world. It's like, we all just need to continue to make things okay for each other. You know, it's kind of like when you rise, we all rise. That's actually one of the cards. It's like, that's really so true. So I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for this podcast and for everything that you're putting out into the world, because it truly is it's really touching hearts and souls of so many people. I want you to know that. My love, thank you. (laughs) Thank you for seeing me and walking this path with Mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I love you so much. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) Oh, heart flutters. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, but please share. Like I I want, I want to, I want you to celebrate this creation this mm-hmm. new this new birth and you um I when yesterday when I was asking like what do you want to call this podcast episode mm-hmm. you're like birthing a new earth mm-hmm. so let's let's talk about that let's talk about your deck like the floor is yours my mm-hmm. goddess just thank you what is your vision well the deck is around the corner which I can't believe it's so funny because I had never created anything like this before and that's been such a beautiful unraveling as well in terms of just learning all the intricacies of you know being super ethical so I do want to mention that so the deck is being launched on the 28th in a couple of days Mm -hmm. first day of spring very intentional 
it's a beautiful time of just, you know, blooming and there's this duality of life and death that happens and so much around the day that I just, it just kept coming to me in meditation, like the 20th is 20th, 20th. And I kind of felt a little angst. Cause I'm like, what if I'm not ready? What if I don't have everything in order? Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, you know what? You're good. Put it out there. It'll land. It's all good. So it's launching on the 20th in a couple of days. Um, and yeah, I'm just, my whole, you know, birthing this new earth is just creating this new way of being, of coexisting, of living, of experiencing, of witnessing, of sharing, of community. It's really all of it for me, of mothering, um, of parenting, of reparenting myself in ways, but also acknowledging and honor my parents and my grandparents, which is just something that comes up for me so much after losing my grandfathers. It's just like this sense of this lineage, this sense of this ancestry has been really strong. So cultivating all of that, but taking that all with me forward, but also creating the new and creating this beautiful place where we can just all coexist Mm -hmm. um, and where our children feel the support and this sense of community for them to also be witness in their purity and their connection without needing to alter or rush through to be an adult and all the things. So that's really what it kind of means to me. Um, and yeah, I'm just really so um, touched by the fact that my words and my experience and my love is going to be put out there. It feels very, I feel very exposed in a lot of ways, but in such a beautiful way that I really just can't wait for this to be in hands of Mm -hmm. everyone it's meant to touch. And yeah, I, I just, I have no attachment to the outcome of any of it. It's more just, you know, I'm just so excited to release it and I'm so excited Mm -hmm. to just put it out there. Yes. And tell me, or tell whoever's listening, like, who is this deck for? Oh, such a goodie. I've been thinking about this a lot as I've been completing my website. Um, So I would say that, um, you know, the obvious, of course, mothers, um, women becoming mothers, women entering pregnancy on the journey of pregnancy, absolutely. But I'd also say um, also people that are birthing really anything, birthing a new business, birthing a project, I really feel this deck can be weaved into any form of creation, any form of birthing. Um, And it really does lend for that type of support. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it lands where it needs to. And I think that it really is a powerful tool um, to really bring you back to your intuitive knowing and your own self-trust in any sort of creation and any sort of birthing of really anything. I love it. Um, I'm so excited to hold it in my hands <laughs> and flip through the beautiful artwork to just receive the wisdom of from you and your, your sisters, the other women that you invited to contribute. Um, so two more questions. Mm -hmm. um what does move with love mean to you oh so good how much time do I have (laughs) (laughs) go for it no I'll say I'll say kind of what first comes to mind um move with love to me really means in every experience in every emotion through every journey through every season we're moving and dancing and playing with all that comes up and move with love means we all innately lead with love we all lead with love what takes us away from that is the sense of disconnection so move with love means you are in full connection with self full connection with all that is greater than us and you're allowing movement and flow and dancing in and out of all these different emotions and experiences in a way that feels fluid and flowy and in alignment with your highest self (laughs) 
I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> that was so, so poetic. And I'm just oh, closing so. my eyes and receiving these words because it just, it does hit on a soulful, mm -hmm. heart-led way. Um, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, last question. Where can the audience, where can the listeners or the viewers find you? Connect with yeah. you? Purchase this deck. Yeah, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I can believe it. Obviously, it's all divinely created for us, but it's just, yeah. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram. I have an Instagram page called Womb Oracle Deck. I also have a website, www.womboracledeck.ca. Um, so you can purchase from the website, which is also through the Instagram page. There will be a link there, but yeah, even beyond purchasing the deck, I am really facilitating and inviting everyone into this beautiful community of womb Oracle and, um, hoping to continue to bring community together in the physical online. The deck is the beautiful tool that initiated it, but I, I really do see it expanding beyond that and becoming this beautiful community. Um, so feel free to join that community. I'd love to have everyone on that. Okay. And on that note, thank you. Thank you for moving with love. Thank you for leading by example. Thank you for being raw, unapologetically, authentically you. Mm -hmm. My beloved soul sister, <laughs> Ashley Adamo, everybody. Oh, <laughs> thank you, love. Uh, and thank so, you. Yes. So until next time, let's adapt the mindset, live the lifestyle, share the movement. Let's all move with love together. <laughs>